Um, so hello again and um, welcome to our workshop, Historical Maps Documents Archaeology, hosted by the Mapping Archaeological Heritage in South Asia, MASA, and Mapping Africa's Indigenous Archaeological Sites and Monuments, um, MESAM projects. Um, we have people registered, I think, and joining us from about 25 different countries. Um, this is great, and it wouldn't have been possible if we had an offline meeting or workshop. Uh, so it's great to have you all here um, with us and we hope our third um, in the series of work online workshops will again provide an opportunity for all of us to engage and connect. Um, and my name is Ozadeh, I am the training co coordinator and research associate for the MASA project um, at the MacDonald Institute for Archaeological Research and I'm very uh, happy and pleased to be your host and moderator today. Before we start, I wanted to say that as you know that this meeting or this workshop is recorded, so we're recording um, the workshop so we can use the video for the people uh, who couldn't join us and also for yourself to have it um, on our um, website as a workshop material. Um, yes, I'm trying to... Okay. Without further ado, I wanted to invite MASA's project's principal investigator at the MacDonald Institute for Archaeological Research, Dr. Cameron P Fetri, um, and Dr. Faye Lander, MESAM's regional project manager at the University of Witwatersrand, to start the workshop by welcoming you all here. Uh, Cameron, if you can start now, it would be great. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you very much, Azadeh. Um, it's it's so wonderful to see see so many people joining us. Um, this is a very exciting opportunity to engage in um, in, a, in a type of interaction. This, uh, we recognise that we are, we are all still in the middle of a, a pandemic, but this is the sort of thing that is, would have been very very difficult in the past was actually speaking to so many people at the same time. Um, and we're now actually in, able to engage with you in so many different locations, so many different time zones. Uh, we realize, we thank you very much for either being up early or being up late or, or whatever uh, current circumstances you're in. Uh, I'm speaking on behalf of the Mapping Archaeological Heritage in South Asia project. Uh, there'll be also a brief introduction from a sister project as well, but we, I'm, it's so great to see our people that are already collaborating with us on the project, uh, people that may at, come to collaborate with us coming forward. Uh, we're really looking forward to talking to you today about some of the uh, approaches and methods that we use and giving you some broader insights into the, to, into the work and, and its potential. Um, I don't want to take up too much more of the time at the beginning, but I'd just like to say thank you all very much and I look forward to speaking to you more shortly. Thanks very much, Cameron and Faye, if you can have the floor now. Greetings, everyone, and welcome. It's amazing to see everyone here. I can't believe how many participants we have in this workshop today, esteemed uh, guests and colleagues. Um, so just about myself, I'm Faye Lander. I'm the Regional Project Manager for Southern Africa for Mapping Africa's Endangered Archaeological Sites and monuments, otherwise known as MIASAM. Uh, and our project in principal investigator is Professor Paul Lane, based at the University of Cambridge. And very excited to have this uh, workshop. First and foremost, a special thanks uh, to the organizers of this workshop, particularly Azada, uh, for bringing everyone together and let's hope it's a successful one. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Faye. Um, so I want to start this workshop um, and uh, introduction session with a poll. Uh, let me start the poll so you can um, fill it out when I talk. So this is the first one, launch. You should be able to see it. So this is mainly a couple of questions, only two, um, and it's mainly to help us to um, 
be able to assess the impact of our workshop because kind of a question to understand what is the knowledge of the topic that we're presenting today before the workshop starts and also I'm going to ask the same questions after so um, we can use it as a as a way to see how um, our workshop was um, successful or not and be able to make our future workshops better so if you can all um, answer these two questions and I can give you um, a minute let's say to get your answers that would be great and I'm not going to share the answer this is just um, for us so um, feel free <laughs> thank you Most of the people have answered, just I'm going to wait another few seconds before stopping the poll. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you again, and thanks for participating at this poll. And thank you again for joining our third workshop, Historical Maps to Document Archaeology in our workshop series. The main aim of our workshop series is provide an opportunity to share knowledge with our stakeholders by way of introducing different technologies and methodologies that we use um, at, our uh, at our projects to identify and document sites, understand the landscapes of the region that we're working at, and monitor condition of the sites over time time. For those who have missed our previous workshop, don't worry as they are accessible on our YouTube channel. We had our first workshop um, on remote sensing in archaeology in December 2020, if I'm correct, and the second one um, on databases and their use in storing, managing and researching archaeological data, um, and that was in um, May uh, of 2021. I'm going to share the link here of our YouTube channel where you can find um, the videos and, I, and when um, this video for this workshop is ready, we will also add that to our YouTube channel. Please subscribe to our channel and you can explore and watch the videos at your pace and leisure. But don't leave us now, <laughs> stay here as we got it. plenty to um, present today. For our um, today's workshop, we are covering another theme that is part of our project's work workflow, and that is use of historical maps in archaeology to map and document archaeological features. And this is also one of the subjects that we have been asked from our previous workshops by our attendees to have a session about. Historical maps provide an important source of data for landscape archaeology to help and understand past landscapes and distribution of possible places of archaeology or heritage importance. These maps usually record enormous amount of information and it also includes either intentional or accidental documentation of archaeological heritage. Their use is complementary to satellite imagery. The earliest uh, satellite imagery uh, are dated to the second half of 20th century. However, these maps, the historical maps, if they're available for the part of the region or the regions that you're working um, on, they're dated to much, they could be dated to much earlier date. Um, and they provide a unique documentation of the landscape before major urbanization, agricultural and industrial development have disturbed the land. With today's workshop, we want to share with you how in our projects we use these maps. Our speakers for today's workshop will take, talk about the context and background of historical maps in South Asia for MASA project and in Africa for MESAM's project. Um, where to look uh, to find, uh, to give you information on where to look to find these maps, what to understand from the map, and the uh, various systematic methods and analysis uh, to use on the map to identify and detect possible sites and provide any useful information to better um, map uh, and document them.
We will present the georeferencing techniques that we're using um, for our projects to locate these sites and the accuracy and also inaccuracy in some places of these maps. And we will be introduced to the machine learning and the automated detection techniques that's been used in archaeology to automatically detect archaeological sites from these maps. Um, I've shared the program of today with um, with all you all, um, and I can add this also um, in the in the chat. We have five different presentations, both by our Massa and Maysam's team, uh, about uh, the mentioned subjects. And I'm very pleased to be joined by our speakers today. Uh, and I'm going to ask them maybe to turn their camera on and say wave and say hi. So we have uh, Cameron, uh, Junaid, Jack, Afifa, Ed. Renier um, and Ivan here um, joining us. Um, a note that I wanted to say on our Q&A session, whenever you have a question um, while the speakers are presenting, please type in your questions in the chat box um, and at the Q&A sessions I will call out your name and you can either um, unmute yourself and turn your camp video on if you like to read out your read out loud your question or if you prefer I can do that and the presenters can answer those questions. If there are any questions in the chat box that we couldn't answer uh, in the time slot that we have, we can we will answer them and then we can also share those answers well with all of you after. Um, our workshop are designed to, to be more like webinars, so our speakers, they present, and we have also these Q&A sessions for um, a bit of interaction, but it's not designed to be a fully interactive workshops. We will having specific and more tailored tearing sessions um, with our collaborators, which those will be our more interactive sessions. And these workshops are more like um, introduction, also introductory sessions for our trainings as well. Before handing over to our first speaker, I wanted to say that I will be monitoring things in the background and if there is any issue, you can raise your hand um, and uh, either chat, uh, type in the chat box. And there is a new functionality with the reactions in Zoom. There is something that says a slow down. Um, so if you think that people are talking fast and you want them to slow down, you can um, use that uh, reaction as well. And I think I was wanted to say this at the beginning, but I think I forgot to say, or, or did I say that this, that the workshop, as you know, is recorded and we also, we're going to take screenshots for our social media. 